Good morning, brothers and sisters. Jim Beckwith reporting here from God's precious word, the spiritual significance of the menorah. The menorah. Well, you can you can uh, do a search on Bing and f- like I did here, and it tells you the menorah, the seven branched lamp stands used to be placed before the Holy of Holies in the tabernacle of God as the symbol for the living God's manifestation. See, because it's Exodus chapter 25 and 37. According to the Old Testament, the tabernacle and the menorah were made in the pattern as instructed by the Lord God, and so they are spiritually significant. Well, today I'm going to give you the full spiritual significance of the menorah. And here's some more pictures of it. Uh, now, we don't, we, we know that God's word is true, so we understand the picture of the menorah could be wrong if it doesn't line up with God's word. Okay, so we're going to be going over this. So what does the menorah look like? What does it stand for spiritually? mind-boggling prophecy here of understanding what it means okay so for one thing i've been sick for two weeks i still am sick i'm still not going to be making videos uh but i i wanted to put out this wonderful teaching uh that god gave me this morning uh as i was meditating on his word and the menorah and how important it is for your salvation and what it stands for is your salvation now, I'm not going to be doing more videos of news right uh, right away until I get better. I've had this bad cold with the virus. Uh, I have a virus in me and, uh, you know, I'm waiting to get rid of it. So I don't have any, uh, you know, I'm not going to the doctor because I don't have any insurance. But whatever the case is, I'm here to do this teaching for you. So please pray for me for a quick delivery so I can come back to doing uh, uh, videos on the news. All right, so we're going to be going over this. So let's start in the book of Genesis. Chapter 25, verse 31. Wait a minute. Yeah, chapter 25, right? 31. No, I'm sorry. Chapter 31. I got it mixed up. And chapter 37. Wait a minute. It is chapter 25. My bad. Pardon me. I got my numbers mixed up. Okay. (laughs) Starting in verse... Okay, and we have to get in right book first. See, that's the reason why I'm not haven't been doing uh, videos because I I have a lot of pressure in my brain right now, my head because of the sinus infection. All right, all right, here we go in Exodus chapter twenty-five, verse thirty-one. And thou shalt make a candlestick of pure gold. Remember that pure gold. A beaten work shall the candlestick be made. His shaft and his branches, his bowls, his knops, and his flowers shall be of the same. And six branches shall come out of the sides of it. Now, you notice the words shall be of the same. We are all of the same. The body of Christ is all the same, right? That's right. And six branches shall come out of the sides of it. Three branches, the candlestick out of one side and three branches of the candlestick out of the other side. What does that mean? Well, let's go into a little further. Three bowls made like unto almonds with a knop and a flower in one branch and three bowls made like almonds in the other branch with a knop and a flower. So you have once again, you have the candlestick in the middle and then you have as you see right here candlestick in the middle ignore those numbers and then you have three on each side right okay and all of that comes out of one branch one stem right 
on the bottom or one trunk likened onto the tree of salvation now now let's go back to where we were it says and in the candlestick shall be four bowls made like unto almonds and with their knops and their flowers and there shall be a knop under two branches of the same and a knop under two branches of the same and a knop under two branches of the same what's that that's uh three knop three knops with two branches under the same three groups of two that's six right there according to the six branches that proceed out of the candlestick hmm in malachi jesus christ is called the branch b-r-a-n-c-h all capital letters their knops and their branches shall be of the same just like it says shall be of the same jesus said in the resurrection ye shall be like the angels in heaven and he also said ye shall be like me of the same now it says uh um and it shall be a one beaten work of pure gold. And thou shalt make the seven lamps thereof, and they shall light the lamps thereof, and that they may give light over against it. Now you need to understand that the pure gold, what is that significant stand, the gold stands for? Not so much gold, but pure. And, well, pure and gold, let me tell you what that means pure and gold okay in ezekiel 28 jesus uh, satan is created in heaven at the mountain of god and his and he is created with 10 precious stones and the final precious stone is gold what is your monetary note what is all monetary notes based on gold so the monetary note of this world is based on gold. The precious stone of this world is gold. Pardon me. Got to drink some of my smacked water. From the water smacker. You should get one. They're really good for your body. Anyway. It says. The gold. Is the monetary note of this. World right okay and satan is the prince of the power of the air in high places presidents senators congressmen you see most of them are quite wicked nowadays don't you now so satan his final stone is gold and in the tabernacle coming down from heaven in Revelation 21, the floor of the city is transparent gold. Not anymore. Now it's transparent at that time, right? When a new heaven and earth happened. But right now, gold is not transparent, is it? No. Why? Because satan has been saw right through we all saw right through him he has been the deceiver of the nations and has been cut down that's right as isaiah 14 says he has been brought down finally and he's done and he's a man like any other man as isaiah 14 says now it says that he, it, it, so we have gold here, right? But the 12 apostles of the Lamb in the tabernacle of God coming down from heaven in Revelation 21, which is a representation of the body of Christ and the 12 tribes of Israel, they have no gold in them. But we stand on this city of pure gold, transparent gold. And what did God say? He said, earth is our, uh, heaven is my throne and earth is my footstool. And we, the body of Christ, are going to be standing 
on the gold. You see what, what God is trying to show you in the stones? He's trying to show you that now that Satan has been put down, we stand on him because we are overcomers of him as Revelation chapter 2 and 3. We have overcome him. Now we just stand on him and he's transparent because we saw the deceiver of all the brethren and the accuser, the accuser of the brethren and all of his works were filthy. They're rotten. Right? Now. Okay. Now. So why is it that the gold, the candlesticks are gold? Okay. Now we saw, we, we know also that in the four gospels that Jesus says, those who accept me, who, those who, who believe on me shall follow me as Christians and we also that he will live in us and that his Holy Spirit or Holy Ghost will live in us but not only that but if you read the four Gospels it says my father who is in heaven shall live in you too wait a minute that means that the Father Son and the Holy Ghost are all living in us that's right now what do we see here we see three branches there shall be a knob under two branches of the same a knob under two branches of the same and a knob under two branches of the same three times two you see you that's the triune God right there that's the triune God that we believe and serve the Father Son and Holy Ghost that bear record in heaven as 1 John 5, 7 says, For there, there are three that bear record in heaven, the Father, the Word, and the Holy Ghost, and these three are one. Where's Jesus Christ? He is the Word manifested in the flesh. John 1, 14. 1 Timothy 3, 16. Great is the mystery of godliness that the Word was met, that he, God manifested in the flesh. And John 1, 14 says the word manifested in the flesh. So God is the word and it is Jesus Christ, the son of God. And this is the father. So the triune God is in the menorah. And it is the body of Christ. Because in the middle of this seven candlesticks is Jesus Christ. Why? Let's go to Revelation chapter 1. By John the Apostle, who loved Jesus, who Jesus couldn't get rid of. He was always by his side. And Jesus says, I love you, John. For some reason, he didn't say that to the other 12 apostles who he chose. Revelation 1.8 Jesus says, I am the Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the ending, saith the Lord, which is, and which was, and which is to come, the Almighty. Again, he is saying, I am the Alpha and Omega, the first and the last, which, and what thou seest, write in a book, and set it unto the seven churches, which are in Asia, and unto Ephesus, and unto Smyrna, and unto Pergamos, and unto Thyatira, and unto Sardis, and unto Philadelphia, and unto Laodicea seven churches and seven golden candlesticks and I turned to see the voice that spake with me and being turned I saw seven golden candlesticks and in the midst of the seven candlesticks is one like unto the son of man clothed with a garment down to the foot and gird about the paps with a golden girdle and if you don't know that the son of man stands for Jesus Christ well now you do and you notice he's in the midst of the seven golden candlesticks? In other words, maybe he's like holding the menorah in his hand. 
Now here's a description of Jesus Christ. His head and his hair were white like wool, as white as snow, and his eyes were as a flame of fire, and his feet like unto fine brass, and if they burned in as if they burned in a furnace, and his voice as the sound of many waters. And he had in his right hand seven stars, and out of his mouth went a sharp two edged sword, and his countenance was as the sun shineth in his strength. And in Malachi he is called the son of righteousness. And I think it's in another Old Testament book. I forgot if it was Malachi. He's also called the branch. B-R-A-N-C-H. Hmm. And when I saw him, I fell at his feet as dead. And he laid his right hand upon me, saying unto me, Fear not, I am the first and the last, just like I said in verse 8. And verse 10, the first and the last. I am he that liveth and was dead, and behold, I am alive forevermore, praise the Lord, and have the keys of hell and of death. Yes, I am the judge of the quick and dead. Write the things which thou hast seen, and the things which are, and the things which shall be hereafter, and that denotes the church age, because John was living in the church age, which started after the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. But he already ascended into heaven at this point. The mystery of the seven stars, which thou sawest in my right hand, and the seven golden candlesticks, the menorah, in his right hand, because they are right with Jesus. The seven stars are the angels of the seven churches, and the seven candlesticks which thou sawest are the seven churches. Now, I've told you several times that the number of a lost soul is six, and the number of a saved soul is seven. But, you know, it would be stupid of me to think that the seven churches or the seven are, are a representation of all the saved souls and the body of Christ going into heaven, right? <laughs> then in Revelation 13, it says, why would you want to count, Jim? Why do you try to make the Bible into some sort of a counting thing? Here is wisdom. Let him that hath understanding count the number of the beast. For it is the number of a man, and his number is 603 score and 6. Well, if you don't know what score means, it means 20. So 3 score means 60. So 666. So what does that mean? The beast. Well, the beast wants to be like the Most High, he's going to have his false prophet. Isaiah 14 says, he says, I want to be like the Most High, Lucifer says, the king of Babylon, verse 4, Isaiah 14, verse 4. So then, he wants to be like the Most High, so he's going to have his his final prophet, just like Jesus had his final prophet, John the Baptist. So he has his final prophet. It's called the false prophet. Revelation 16, the three, uh, the three bad spirits that come out like frogs in, uh, in Revelation chapter 16. Three bad spirits. You see, fallen angels. So he has his false prophet. He also has the Antichrist, a man out of this world. And at the mid-tribulation point, Satan manifests in the flesh. Just like Jesus manifested in the flesh, the Word manifested in the flesh, God manifested in the flesh. He's going to do the same thing. Because he wants to be like the Most High. Isaiah 14, verse 13, I believe. Yes. You see what's happening, folks? God's signification of the body of Christ, Jew and Gentile, both mid made twain one new man in Christ. Ephesians 2, 12 through 20 tells you the definition of the body of Christ is but neither is 
neither Jew or Gentile is both. But the Jews and their menorah do not understand what the menorah means. It stands for Jesus Christ is the trunk of salvation. He is the branch. He is in the midst of the throne. Now, check this out. When we go over to Revelation 1, 7, here's from deeper understanding of the menorah. As we said here at the bottom, the mystery of the seven stars which thou sawest in my right hand and the seven golden candlesticks. The seven stars of the, are the angels of the seven churches. But the seven candlesticks, golden candlesticks, which thou sawest are the seven churches. Right? Okay. Now check this out. Now once the hereafter has happened, the rapture has happened, and we have been called to come up hither to meet the Lord in the air, as Revelation, as First Thessalonians 4, verse 16 and 17 says. Then all of a sudden it says, And out of the throne proceeded lightnings and thunderings and voices. And there were seven lamps of fire burning before the throne, which are the seven spirits of God. Hmm. Well, let's go over to the next chapter in Revelation 5, another picture in heaven, still in heaven only. And verse 6, it says, And I beheld, and lo, in the midst of the throne and of the four beasts, and in the midst of the elders, and if you don't know, the four and twenty elders are the body of Christ. In the midst, just like in the midst of the seven golden candlesticks was the son of man stood a lamb as it had been slain having seven horns and seven eyes which are the seven spirits of god sent forth into all the earth very interesting huh what did we say the seven spirits of god was in revelation 4 it says right here in verse 6 again verse 6 just like revelation 5 6 we have matching numbers here the seven spirits of god R verse six in revelation four are the seven um oh i'm sorry it's verse five my part my my bad it says, out of the throat proceedeth lightnings and thunderings and voices, and there were seven lamps of fire burning before the throne, which are the seven spirits of God. Well, wait a minute. It said in Revelation 5, 6, that the seven spirits of God sent forth into all the earth. But this is the picture in heaven. That's right. We're talking about being in heaven here. And next thing you know, he says, they were the seven spirits of God that went into all the earth. Past tense. Hmm. Very interesting. And those seven spirits of God that went into all the earth in the past were also seven lamps of fire burning before the throne. You notice something that has changed here? Well, if you go to Revelation, back to Revelation 1, it said that the seven candlesticks which thou sawest are seven churches. Hmm. Well, what happened here in Revelation 5, 6? It says that the seven spirits of God sent forth into all the earth. The church, isn't the church in all the earth? Yes. So the seven churches are the seven spirits of God. And they are also in the, at, at the throne of God, they are now seven lamps of fire. But on earth, they were seven golden candlesticks. You see what I'm showing you right here? The seven golden candlesticks, they were golden on earth because that is... The prince of the power of the air is Satan. And your monetary note is based on gold. But in heaven, the gold has been taken away. You see that? 
The menorah stands for the seven churches and the body of Christ, the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost, the three groups of two. And Jesus Christ is in the midst of them, the candlestick in the middle, the, the three on each side of the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost living in us. That's what the menorah stands for. The seven lamps of fire burning and the seven spirits of God are the church. But in heaven, the gold has been taken out because in heaven, there's no such thing as gold as a monetary note. And when you go to Ezekiel 28, you see that Lucifer is created with the final stone of representation or signification upon him is gold. The final one out of 10. But in Revelation 21, the 12 apostles of the Lamb have 12 precious stones and none of them are gold. And the 12 tribes of Israel are all, um, are all decorated with uh, pearls. That's right. They're all just pearls. Uh, forgot, is it pearl? I thought it was pearls. Yeah, they are pearls. Um, it's here somewhere. Huh. I'm having a problem finding it. There. Oh, I'm having a problem finding it, but I thought it was uh, pearls. I can't seem to find the pearls. <laughs> but they are pearls. The 12 tribes of Israel are called pearls. I can't seem to find it. I must be missing 12 gates, 12 angels. Oh, okay. Well, I can't seem to find it right now, but the, the 12 tribes of Israel are pre are decorated with 12. Per there they are, finally. <laughs> the 12 gates were 12 pearls. Every several, ga several gate was of one pearl, and the street of the city was pure gold. Now, again, the street where we walk on is transparent gold or glass. You see? as gold as if it were transparent glass when satan was our gold on the earth is not transparent is it you see because say there's two reasons here because satan has been put down we saw that he was the deceiver of the brethren and and that he deceived all the nations and cursed them but now he's been put down so we see right through him and also that God said that earth is my, or uh, heaven is my throne and earth is my footstool. Well, what is God is good and us going to be standing on? His footstool, the gold, because Satan is the prince of the power of this world. But once Satan is put down, now we stand on top of him. And we see that he was the deceiver of the brethren. And he brought all so much terrible things to all the nations of the world after he is brought down. So now we stand on top of him in this wonderful tabernacle of God coming down from heaven onto earth where there's a new heaven and new earth. You see? 
So gold has been changed into, into, into like transparent glass. We see everything that he has done now. Okay. All right. So anyway, I just want you to understand the spiritual significance of the menorah is mind boggling. It really stands for Jesus is the tree of salvation. And Paul said it, that salvation is of the Jews. And when you read in Revelation chapter 5, it says that, And one of the elders saith unto me, Weep not, behold, the lion of the tribe of Judah, the root of David, hath prevailed to open the book and to loose the seven seals thereof. The seven seals, the seven trumpets, and the seven vials are all about bringing an untold amount of great tribulation saints into heaven by loving not their lives unto death. There will be there's coming a famine in the land, not of milk and not of honey, not of bread, not of water, but of the word of God. Hosea said. But right now the word of God is, is plentiful and no one's getting saved hardly. But in the great tribulation, by much persecution and much tribulation, many untold amount as revelation chapter 7 says great tribulation saints will be coming into heaven because there won't be there will be a famine in the land there won't be much word of god and they will love not their lives unto death and be beheaded revelation 12 11 revelation 14 and revelation 20 verse 4 But through the seven trumpets and seven vials and seven seals come God's finished work. You see? Seven, the menorah, is all about salvation. Hardly anyone's getting saved now. But through persecution, through Satan being given his power by the Almighty and the Antichrist, as Revelation 13 says, much persecution, much is brought forth into heaven. Too much is given, much is expected. It's beautiful. Salvation is of the Jews. And why is it that it says Jesus is the root of David? Well, I don't know. Let's go over to Romans chapter 9. And see what it says over here. Nay, but, O man, who art thou that what that replies against God? Shall the thing formed say to him that formed it, Why hast thou made me thus? Hath not the power potter power over the clay? of the same lump to make one vessel unto honor and another unto dishonor? Did he not make David unto honor? Yes. You see, the root of David. And not only that, but that David is written in the book of Matthew in the chronologies here, the book of the generation of Jesus Christ, the son of David, the son of Abraham. And then you read it all here. You see? So all the generations from Abraham to David are 14 generations. And from David on to carrying away into Babylon are 14 generations. And from the carrying away onto Babylon onto Christ are 14 generations. Babylon. Babylon. I guess that would have nothing to say. Nothing in matching mystery Babylon, the great, the mother of harlots and abominations of the earth. Babylon mentioned 299 times in the Bible. Yes, Babylon, the king of Babylon, Lucifer, Isaiah 14, 4. So the menorah is a beautiful understanding of the tree of salvation. That's right. Jesus Christ, the center of it, right from the beginning, 
the center of it. Living in us, the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost, the three groups of two. It's beautiful. And he's holding it in Revelation chapter 1. And in heaven, we become the seven lamps of burning fire because the church has gone up into heaven and there are voices coming out of it. That's the church. Thank you for listening and may the Lord bless. Let me be serious with you. I would rather that you donate to my ministry directly. I cannot survive financially to keep this ministry and new service going without your help. And we all know their plans to shut me down again. But many of you would like to receive a gift or a product as a token of my appreciation. And I don't blame you. Isn't it about time Uncle Sam started paying you instead of you paying him? It is about time. The federal government pays you your rent check. The government rents out thousands of buildings instead of buying them every year. This is all funded by the current $11.1 billion building fund in our budget. Get your free federal rent check today sign up with the federal millionaire information here down below become a shareholder to receive federal rent checks for life by making a one-time investment as a shareholder an IRS ruling declares this to be totally legal this is no joke no scam and been for many years the longer your name is on the distribution list, the larger your federal rent check grows. As inflation rises along with real estate, the government pays you more every year. Starting out as little as $1,800 a month would be your rent check. Wouldn't that be nice to receive every month a rent check like that? The federal government continues to raise your income as inflation rises. This puts an end to retiring with a fixed income that leaves you going broke as you get older. This will put a major dent in those people who hate their home tax is going up every year, wouldn't it? And folks, the price for this valuable information will cost you only $39 a year or $79 for a two-year membership. Sign up today.